All right, so we just finished Pyramid of Forests and Adventures, um, and now we're going to talk about it and what we liked about it. We'll start on landing over there and with uh, components. Components. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice eight. I like the components. Um, I have never actually played this game before, so it's my first time through. But I like the way they laid it out. I like the way uh, the cubes, you know, the blocks that are falling down. I like the way that works and everything. Uh, Chris sprung for the the pre-painted miniatures, which are really nice and everything. So yeah, I, it's uh, I like it. Um, some might say the cards are a little on the small side, but they don't really bother me much. So I give it a, a good uh, eight. I think I'm going to go eight also. I've definitely seen games with, you know, more interesting stuff and other components. But I do like the element of the, it actually does feel like a trap mechanism mm -hmm. being played in the games. Very Indiana Jones. Uh, I do like the minis, even with the, even the unpainted ones are well done and everything you know so I, I always count that as a plus normally I don't like small cards but if you're gonna have to use a bunch of cards on a board itself like this if you went you know if you went full card size it would have to be a much larger board so understandable I don't like the small cards but I know why they went with them instead of it seems like maybe just a cheaper route like some games go mm -hmm. I think there's a purpose behind this so I'm gonna go eight on this I, uh, this is one of the adventure series is one of my favorite series. Uh, I wish they'd out, come out with another one. Uh, but out of the two, this is my lesser favorite one. I don't want to say <laughs> least favorite. Uh, so on components, the previous adventures would be a, a 10 in my book. So I'm going to give this one a, a nine and only because I have the pre pre-painted ones. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I didn't, that'd be more like an eight and a half, but I want to yeah. give it a nine. Just because this is a scenario we're, we're grading here. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, theme. Cool. So, the theme, I think it's great. You do, like Jared said, you do feel like a block could fall on you at any time. Yeah. You feel like, you feel the tension of a, of a of a Tomb Raider or whatever, so yeah, it, uh, I think they did great. I like the Egyptian theme. You don't see that all that often. A lot of those other themes are really overdone, so uh, I like it quite a bit, and I'm going to go with a nine. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm going to go eight. I really like the theme. I mean, it's nothing, you know, I've, I've seen it in other games before, so mm -hmm. it's nothing just mind-blowingly awesome or original or whatever. But I, I do like the theme, and I think they went, you know, really well with the idea of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they captured the, the genre of it pretty well with certain elements. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go eight on it. Uh, I think the theme-wise, it's great. I love the Indiana Jones thing. And uh, I really wish, I think they could have done more with this. This, not the game itself, but the... Uh, as compared, compared to the first game was amazing and this one it seemed like they repeated a lot of the same yeah. traps I mean you're basically getting one when you search here getting one when you search you're just changing the picture on the card is all you're really mm -hmm. doing yeah and then as far as the pick lock picking that's the only other mechanism they took from the first game yeah uh, they didn't add any new danger to the game except the falling rocks which was great but that's it that's the only thing really different danger wise and so I think they could have went better so that's going to pull my score back mm -hmm. so I'm going to give it a uh, eight and a half for mm -hmm. that's cool. all right so I think that rolls us over to gameplay uh, again that's going to get a high rating for me on this I enjoyed it I've been I've known about this, these games for a while, but this was my first time to ever play it. Finally, we got it off the shelf and played it, and I really liked it. I look forward to playing it again. Uh, so I'm going to give it a gameplay of an 8. Um, it rolls pretty smoothly. The way you know, you're know you rolling the dice, and then everybody uses that dice pool for that round. 
Um, it's not complicated, but uh, gets the uh, you know gets the action moving, and I, and I liked it. So um, I think I said an eight, and I'll stick with it. I think I'm actually going to go nine on this. I, I, I think the gameplay is a very strong element of this. I mean, there's other good things about this, but you really get a sense of uh, urgency. Mm -hmm. The longer the game goes mm -hmm. on, you've really got to, you know, you're trying to get more loot than the other guy, but whenever all those blocks really start dropping as the game progresses, it you feel a lot of tension the longer it goes on. And I like that gameplay. I mean, there is strategy to it, but there's also some luck to it. But I like the timing element, and it really fits in with the whole theme. I you agree. Know? Yeah, every, every turn, you're trying to balance your greed versus yeah. your will to live. You know? <laughs> yeah, and definitely one block falling in just the wrong area can totally screw up your plans. You yep. Know? Yep. Chris thought he was going to have an e easy exit, and then that one block fell. And, and then he went, yeah, and then had to lose treasure. Yeah. Another block failed. You got to, you know, and it just keeps on. You could push it so far, and then so I like the gameplay element. I think it was really well done with a timer that's not actually a timer, but it's an element of the game mm -hmm. that's really cool. So. I agree. Yeah, and the timer in the first game was the boulder, yeah, basically, and then the what was you know they even suggest in the first game that you play two characters, and you have a backup because you're going to yeah. die. Mm, and yeah. it's that they should have left that in this game. They should have left that. It's so deadly that you need to have a backup character that can come in someplace in the game and take over in case you die. And <laughs> that I miss. But uh, I love the gameplay. I think they did well making another mechanic to hurry you along, to make you choose between greed and give you that same feeling. I, I'm going to give it an, uh, an, a nine. I'm going to give it a nine for gameplay. Yeah. Nice. All right, and then we always... Wrap up with replayability, and I'm going to give that a high nine also because I would definitely play this game again. Uh, no question. Um, I, you know, the, the randomness of which blocks are going to fall and... You know, just deciding how fast you want to race into the temple or do you want to stay down here and, and scavenge through the rubble and stuff. So I think there's different tactics you could take each time, um, which would keep me wanting to play it over and over. So uh, I'll give it a 9 on replayability. I think I'm going to go an 8 on replayability. This is the kind of game where I, we played it a couple times and then we haven't played it for a few years. And then we played it night, and I really enjoyed it. It's not a game that I think I'm going to say once every two, three weeks, hey, let's play this game or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's a game that I like it well enough where two, three times a year or so, whenever we're playing games, you look, hey, we haven't played that in a while. Let's play it. We have fun doing it. I don't feel like I have to do it over and over again in a short period of time. But I can. this is always one of those games, whenever we bring it up, like, yeah, yeah, I enjoy that, so we'll play it. So it's a game I would play, like, you know, three times, four times a year. Mm -hmm. So it's got replayability, you know, for me. So, yeah, I think an eight. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually go with seven on replayability, and that's because I own both games. Yeah. Because normally when we talk about playing this type of game, I want the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if it's, if it's the only game you had, it'd be higher than that, but... Yeah. Out of the two, I've got another game almost exactly like this. I'm going to pull the other one because it's my favorite. So that's why I drug it down to a seven. But otherwise, it's a very fun game. And I would, I mean, if someone, I'm at someone else's house and they pull it out, no question, I'll play it. Maybe the genre, I mean, there is like an explorer sense of urgency. The Curse of the Temple or Escape from the Temple. Yeah, several games like this. This is a really done one in the genre and everything. So, and maybe that's why I went an 8, which is high, but not, you know, the highest I could go for a game because I, I enjoy playing it, but I mean, there are other games oh, yeah, that's kind of close to this comparatively, you know, and... We play those also every now and then. So that's why, I'd, like I said, a couple times a year, I'd break this out and play it and enjoy it, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's throw the score up right around here. Cool. <laughs> and uh, the 
you've heard our thoughts on it, so now you should go out and try it and see if you like it yourself. And we'll see you next time on the Batcave. See ya. See ya. I was going to like fours and fives. Wow. Anyway, like four, three fours away. Yeah. I like this game. And we usually, it comes down usually right to the very squishy part, I mean, where you're almost about to die. Crazy person trying to grab all the blues you can before the tip comes down around me. Yeah, that's good. I yeah. like that a lot.